You might have certain jobs that you want to ensure aren't duplicated, but perhaps various code paths could create them and verifying that you didn't duplicate them isn't something you wanted to add to your application code. Sidekick Enterprise offers a solution in the form of the unique jobs feature. Let's get started. We're using the Sidekick Batches project tagged with before episode 006.2. Let's provide some context for why this might be useful. We have a basic controller here demonstrating our problem. It represents a controller action that takes a brief amount of time to complete and enqueues a job. Let's look at our puts worker. It's slightly different than the last episode. So now it takes a message and it will output whatever message you give it and then it'll sleep for a little bit. So this is basically indicating a job that takes a little time to complete. All right, so let's open this up in the browser. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and run the server and come out of full screen mode here. And I'm not running the Sidekick worker, so nothing's gonna actually work the jobs right now, and that's fine. And I'll come over to my browser and have a look. And I'm going to simulate an impatient user that clicks this button quite a few times, just thinking that it's not working because it took a little bit. And then it spins, and eventually, because this is sort of single-threaded, if we look, we had quite a few of these come through, right? And so we can go ahead and open up the Sidekick interface and have a look at our queues, look at the default queue, and we can see it has six jobs that are the same thing, right? So right now, this thing just outputs some text, right? But if this job were doing something uh, different, imagine it's charging the user's credit card, or it's sending an email, or anything else that we didn't want to happen six times here, uh, this could range from a minor problem to a rage-inducing event that causes a customer to get really mad at us. So you could solve this with some JavaScript by disabling the button on click, and I've seen a lot of people do that. But this doesn't actually save you because some people don't have JavaScript enabled. So this is the problem we have. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete these just for the sake of the next little bit. Okay, so now this is clear. So how can we solve this problem with Sidekick Enterprise's unique jobs feature? So let's start off by coming back here, and we will enable the unique jobs feature in the initializer. And we don't need any of this for this uh, demonstration, so I'll just comment it out. And we just need to call sidekick enterprise unique bang to enable the unique jobs feature. But you really don't want to run this in test mode because you'll get confused about various things, probably. So we just won't run it in the test mode. So uniqueness is done based on a combination of the worker class, the arguments, and the queue that it's going into. So you can create duplicates in different queues if that has value to you. So now let's make our puts worker unique. So we'll open up our worker. And we just say sidekick options. It's going to be unique for 10 seconds. And so that means we can't duplicate a uh, we can't duplicate this job within 10 seconds. If a duplicate event came in 10 seconds later, that's that's fine. And then you can see that we are sleeping for 10 seconds here. So this is important, right, because if the job completes, so if this job just completed immediately, uh, then we can duplicate it. The way that Sidekick works is it doesn't let you duplicate a job that's already in the queue. So if it completes, it's no longer in the queue. So after 10 seconds, if your job were still running um, or had not yet been run, then another job could be added. So just understand how this uh, uniqueness works. So for this reason, you should write your unique workers under the understanding that they're provided sort of best effort uniqueness but not a 100% guarantee that they won't be duplicated because maybe you had a uniqueness for five minutes, but something was backing up the queue, and so this didn't even get worked. So this way they at least won't have duplicates most of the time, and if you tune the numbers, you can probably fix it for almost all cases for yourself, and you might still need to put some logic into the worker. So 10 seconds is probably a really dumb amount of time for uniqueness, but it turns out that it makes sense for doing a demonstration, and so let's see it. So I'm going to run the server again. Go back to here, and we will go to our root. And so I'll do the same thing. Uh, so impatient, I'll make impatient two, just so it looks different. You can see that it's different jobs. And I'll do the same thing. I'm going to click this button multiple times. And if you look at the server, we can see still that we sent multiple requests with impatient two to that controller. So let's go ahead and look at sidekick again. And we'll look at the default queue. And now there's only one job in there. So the uniqueness saved us from that user being a double clicker or being impatient or whatever. 
So in conjunction with scheduled jobs, uh, the uniqueness period is going to be added to the scheduled difference. So if you schedule a job to run in an hour and we have this sort of 10 seconds, then it will keep you from enqueuing another job for one hour and 10 seconds in, in that particular case. If you know you want to run a job multiple times against the configured uniqueness, so you've, you've said that it's unique in this particular fashion, but you want to be able to, under certain circumstances, explicitly uh, cause, regardless of whether there's already one, a new, uh, a new job to be created, then, actually, let me just copy this. You can pass that through. So I'm going to make it possible to specify that we can allow dupes in the UI. And then we'll tweak our controller. And here we will say, we have this worker, we'll start off like this, right? Puts worker, and then we'll replace this with the worker. And really we wanna say the worker is, if params allows du allow dupes is one, then we're gonna do something else. So if it's one, we're going to say puts worker dot set unique for to false. And so now this is going to be the worker dot perform async. And so again, if you pass this through, the worker is going to be configured to have unique for false. So we can run this again and I'll make a new, I'll run the server. I'm not going to clear out this. Uh, actually, I'll go ahead and delete this job. And so now if we come here, we'll do impatient three. And if we say allow dupes, then when I click this multiple times, it's going to allow dupes. So we can look at the queue. And yeah, there we go. It's there five times. So if you have a reason to duplicate a job that is otherwise unique, you can do it. You just configure the worker. So that's it. Today we learned how to use Sidekick Enterprise's unique jobs feature to ensure jobs don't get enqueued more frequently than they need to be, as well as how to override the uniqueness requirement if we need to. I hope you enjoyed it. See you soon.